Welcome to another edition of The Other Way. I'm Luke Jones, and we're here in Vorontsovsky Palace in the south of the Crimea, right on the Black Sea, which you can see behind me. Now, you'd never know that you were here in the Crimea because this palace was actually designed by a certain Edward Bloor, who just happened to be the guy who uh, designed Buckingham Palace. So there you are, a little bit of England right smack in the heart of the Crimea. Now, Vorontsovsky Palace has had a lot of important visitors over the year, none more than a certain Winston Churchill, who came here in 1944. This was the, where the Yalta Conference took place. Well, actually, just up the road. But he came here and he couldn't believe his eyes when he saw this piece of England smack bang in the heart of the Crimea. Now, pre-revolutionary counts such as uh, Vorontsov himself always looked for a little bit of comfort in their lives and you can't get much better than a uh, nice impromptu chair. Now, people like Count Vorontsovsky didn't just build amazing palaces. They made sure that there was a superb garden surrounding it, obviously with the back, sea in the background. Now, they imported trees from all over the world. One of the more bizarre ones was this one here called the Drunken Pine. And it's named that because for the first 10 years it grows up straight and then it starts tilting as if it's had a few. But we'll be uh, leaving the wine for a little bit later. Vorontsov was reportedly quite a romantic guy and he wanted to share the love so he made sure that one of the ponds in the garden was shaped like a heart. Here I am standing at the crest of it and apparently legend has it that if you throw a coin in and you make a wish the larger the coin the more chance there is of you falling in love. There you go. And behind me you can see these cliffs and that's where we're going to be heading up shortly to Ipetri for a very uh, strenuous hike right up to the top. 1,243 meters up we go to the top of Ipetri. level one, up to the next level now. cable car. Now, it took 20 years to build this. The idea originally was to do it in 1967, but it didn't actually start running until 1987. But uh, a few years later, here we are. Now, if we look over here, we can actually see sod all down there because of the mist, but I can guarantee you that the Black Sea is straight down there. It's a little bit chilly up here at the top of Ipetri, but you, know, you can buy things to keep you warm. Uh, coats, everything, and uh, hey, look at that. <laughs> Just what I always needed. Well, we made it up to the very top of Ipetri, and we've been really lucky with the view. Check that out, the Black Sea. You, know, you really can't get much better than that. We're over a thousand meters up. It's a little bit chilly, as you can see, but uh, I like it cold, that's why I came here. Now, 
behind me is the very, very highest point of Ipetri. There's a little bridge connecting one part of the rock to the other if you're feeling brave. There's an expression that says, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Here I'd say you wait five seconds and it changes. Over there, it's completely misty, can't see a thing. And then on my right, you've got Yalta, which we'll be visiting next, which is beautifully clear. Well, if there's one site that captures the imagination of everyone when it comes to the Crimea, it swallows nest behind me. It was initially built in 1912 as a house, and then during Soviet times, it was a library, and now it's a restaurant. So uh, let's celebrate to that. Cheers. The Swallow's Nest was great from the uh, lunch vantage point with a beer, but we're going for a little closer look. Let's go for a sale. Okay, so there it is. If this woman would shut up just for a second, you might be able to hear what I'm saying, but there it is in the background. Swallow's Nest. back on dry land now. Great trip to see uh, Swallow's Nest. Now, I could do with a coffee and an ice cream and I know just the place. But before that, there's somebody um, important who we need to go and visit. Well, I promised you someone famous and here he is, the big man himself, Franklin D. Roosevelt, after his visit in 1944. Now, who would have thought you'd have a US president prominently figured here, right in the center of Yalta. Now I wonder how long it's gonna to take to have a statue of Donald Trump somewhere in uh, this part of the world. We're on the promenade here in Yalta. Now during Soviet times, this is where the elite came, the ones who were more equal than others. Today, Yalta's open for everyone. Now, we're going to take a walk along and get a coffee and an ice cream. The, it's high tide, so we uh, can't really go to the beach. This is the beach in Yalta. It's a little bit shingly, but the water's warm still, and uh, the birds are coming in. I wonder what time that guy started this morning. Right, time for an ice cream. Let's see what they've got. This is what France has to offer in the Crimea. О, будьте добры, не можете мне с карамелью, пожалуйста? Да. Хорошо. Прекрасно. Сколько стоит? 90 рублей. 90 рублей. Вау, 90 рублей. А вас обалкин. Well, sadly, we're coming to the end of what's been a fantastic day out in Yalta and adding to that Ipetri and uh, Varansovsky Palace. Uh, it's still warm enough to uh, be here in t-shirt and enjoy an ice cream and there's even a few people swimming. So, hope you've enjoyed this edition of Luke Jones The Other Way. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like and share. Not always in that order. Make sure you subscribe though and we'll see you again soon in the Crimea. This is Daniel.